Hi, Internet world. This is Christy Ray, and you're watching the sit down with the 13th Wolfman. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's 13th Wolfman. You know who I have with me today. I have Eric Edwards and Damien Maffei from A Nun's Curse. Welcome to Sit Down, you two. Hi. Hello. Good to be here. Thanks yeah, for having yeah, us. Well, well like uh, like you and I said earlier, Erica, you're you're a producing partner with uh with one of the family, you know. Christy, Absolutely. You know. So so how's that going for you, uh uh it's honey honey head films yep honey head films we uh we founded it about a year and a half ago and we started off shooting short films writing producing directing editing the whole the whole gamut and now we are kind of honing in and focusing on a feature film that we're going to be going we're in pre-production and we're going to be going into principal photography in the spring so exciting but we've never been in a movie together so we're really really excited to finally get to do that even if we're playing antagonistic sisters so <laughs> yeah it's gonna be fun christy, to run told us, christy told us a little bit about about that that you're playing sisters and it sounds like a really interesting film yeah we um i i read through it today and i'm I I was laughing out loud because I was just imagining Christy and I having to riff off of each other in this way, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think, you know, we're going to have to get into character and really try to keep a straight face just because I think we're, we're just, there's going to have to be that kind of intuition there between us so that we just, we can keep it together. I was just thinking about us playing those characters, and we're just going to have to be bouncing off each other with the dialogue and things like that. So I'm excited. Sounds like a good time. And Damien. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, you're, you're part of the movie, A Nun's Curse. Uh, so I'm can told, I ask how yeah. you got, how did you get involved with it? Uh, this guy named Tommy Fairclaw, the director, writer, he uh, offered me the role. And uh, I think he wanted me to. <clears throat> he wanted me to have some great story about the casting process, but I forgot it what what it was. That's the real story. Um, something like American Idol ish. Uh, he just contacted me and uh, said, "Do you want to play um, an asshole in my movie?" <laughs> Can I curse? I did. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I was like, okay, I'll do it. Send it over. And, uh, ow. Jesus. You see that? Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of broke your concentration once you get attacked from behind, huh? Uh, <laughs> um... Yeah, I wish I had a better story, but no, that's that's, that's fine. I, so, are are you a horror fan in general, or just an actor? Or I mean, uh, I do like the horror genre. Uh, since I mean, since I can remember, I've been a fan of uh, horror movies. Um, recently, well, I mean, that's... this year in particular, uh, you know, I'm had a movie come out recently and then I have another one coming out in the fall which are you know, fairly high profile movies um, and I'm a villain in both of them so I've been getting offered a lot of villain roles um, and while the character in The Nun's Curse you know he's I mean he's, he's, he's a dick uh, he's a good natured <laughs> dick um, but you know he's not the villain, and, and um, I think uh, really you know good-natured Dick is in my wheelhouse. So okay. I I thought it would be a good good thing to do that to kind of break up the horrible villain. 
phase I'm in right now. So, so when you say good, because I'm I'm a huge horror fan, and I know I, you know, when you say good natured dick, is it the guy that when you're watching the movie, you're going, oh my god, he just needs to die, or is it just, you know, the clown? Uh, no, he's not the clown. I mean, he's a little clowny. He's, you know, he's the um, if it were, you know, if it were the usual teen movie, he's, uh, you know, he's a jock. But it's a, okay. it's a little, you know, he's making dick jokes and grabbing his balls and stuff. But uh, so what okay. is important for me as an actor to do is not make that unintentionally irritating. You know, right. so, he's, so he's not the arrogant. He's not the arrogant dick is what I'm getting. Uh, at. He'll probably be arrogant because I. Oh, know, OK. So it is the guy you want to die. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no. I'm, <laughs> You know, he's um, what we're going to try to do there is, is um, he's arrogant and you, you don't like him, but, you know, slowly turn the tide there and make him kind of, you know, maybe, you know, you, you root for him a little bit. Sounds like a good time, man. So this not movie. Not a bad person. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so this movie was funded by, uh, by an Indiegogo. Did uh, did they did they reach the goal that they were shooting for? Yeah, they did. He, yeah, he, they reached uh, two goals, a stretch goal oh. too. Yeah, that's cool. There's uh, a lot those... of positive reactment. I think reaction to it. So um, I think they're almost two hundred percent funded of the goal. So I think that that's good. Uh, it shows a lot of. Uh, people are invested and excited about it. It's going to look really good, too, because Tommy's shooting on a red. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> yeah, when uh, when we first started doing this, there were quite a few movies that were that were trying to get funded by Indiegogo's, and they weren't meeting their marks because I don't think a lot of people had faith in the, the indie scene at the time. And it seems like in the last year or two, a lot more movies are, are finding their funding and – what you just said, stretch goals. Um, one guy that we know that works, uh, Brian K. Williams, the last one of the last movies he did, he did stretch goals, and it's like, if you if we hit this one point, we'll put this special feature on the film for you. If you do this one, we'll put this other. And they hit like four or five stretch goals out of nowhere, and it was crazy. I think Tommy approached it very uh, realistically. Um, so and you know that that's important. You know you 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 know what you're, you know what you're doing. You know what your um, your draws are. You know what your big guns are if you have any. And uh, you know he, he he utilized all that. And um, you know he didn't he didn't reach for anything that um, that was ridiculous. I mean you're basically just pre-selling the movies. So right. Yeah. I mean it. it you know, it, it was never a question, really, was it going to hit the target? I mean, it was always striving towards that. So. Yeah, but it's, it's some, sometimes, you know, the the amount of time they give you to do an Indiegogo, it just sometimes it doesn't hit, you know. You might have to... People you, you said, have to um, uh, well, you know, these campaigns are... I mean, it's, it's, it's like having a full-time job. You know, you got yeah. every day be pushing yourself, you know, you throw all pride away, you know, you're just begging for money, you're trying to give perks and whatever that <clears throat> people want every day, you get to email people, and it's, it's, it's relentless, and, you know, no one, <clears throat> no one wants to part with money, so everyone's, you know, like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm going to do that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it, you're like, ah, so you just, I mean, you got to keep going, you got to keep going. And uh, a lot of people set unrealistic goals. Or they, they don't, you know, they haven't done their crowdfunding homework. Or right. they just don't have an interesting movie. I, I just, I, I think it's a, I, I think people have found more faith into the indie scene in the last year and a half. You know, it just seems like we're seeing a lot of incredible indie films come out. And some that are not so incredible. But, I mean, those are the ones that, uh, you know, that, that get lost in the show. That make all the so, money. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. There you Bad. go. So, Erica, 
What's your what, what's your role in this movie? So I am. Um, uh, my my character's name is uh, AK Ashley K, and uh, she is kind of she is the inciting incident, I guess, to the film. It's her idea to um, explore oh. um, this old kind of the old building where um, where a lot of the the nun lore is fabled to have taken place and. So it's it's her idea to go in and uh, kind of see what's going on, and she's she's a total shutterbug, so she always has her camera on her, and she's interested in the history. She's been told these tales growing up, so that's also kind of a point of friction with her and her sister. So uh, she's kind of she's relentless in her quest to discover what's really going on with this, you know, the tale of the nun and whether or not, you know, whether or not they are alone on this property and in this prison, this abandoned jail, so. She's a troublemaker. Uh, she's a little well, bit of a troublemaker, yeah. Well, she's kind of dirty but, and quirky, but she's a troublemaker. Why don't you she, just stay out of other people's <laughs> properties? <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like she has a natural curiosity of things. I yeah. would say so. Yeah, you mean like right. a cat, and what do they say? Curiosity, yeah. and then yeah, yeah, but except yeah, you got to bring everyone down with you. <laughs> I think I think she, you know, it's you know, revenge of revenge of the nerdy younger sister a little bit. You know, she has to <laughs> think she's she doesn't seem to really care so much about you know any sort of potential danger. It's always so the nerds. It's always the nerds. Yeah. You don't see like the, the jocks or the <laughs> you know, douchebags. But it's always the nerds with the Ouija boards or opening doorways <laughs> or going to prisons. Yeah. Yeah. They're always the ones starting shit. Yeah. The nerds are the nerds are the ones going to prisons? I mean, come on. <laughs> Not as prisoners, but when the oh, prisons okay. have been abandoned for <laughs> decades. They're the ones uh, bringing the people there. I guess. I mean, that if it wasn't for the nerves, we wouldn't have the cell phone, so. <laughs> except, that, except that they never work in the horror movies because there's no signal. Because if the phones work, you could call the cops and the army. So uh, that, well, those nerds because... better get on some horror movie working <laughs> You, you do realize that, that, that the nerds that made the cell phones didn't make them to work out in the middle of nowhere with no cell relay stations around, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's like, hey, They, look at they this know one. that, so that's why they lure the jocks out into the, to the dead zones, you know? So. Exactly. They, they, they want to take your girlfriends, man. <laughs> we get the jocks out of the way, and then we get all the hot chicks. <laughs> It's all a ploy. There's a plan. There's an it's overarching the plan. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it sounds like it sounds, so. When do you guys start shooting this? October. October. Yep. Also, is this one you're talking about down in North? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm we'll like be down sure. in the Carolinas. Yep. That sounds like fun. So I'm, I'm guessing they, that he's got all the the shots and all the. He scouted all the areas, got it all figured out already. Yeah, Tommy's a really specific writer. You can, I think he, um, when I worked on Family Possessions with him, he definitely shoots for an edit. So he has a really interesting connected brain in that way as a filmmaker. He he sees things, you see it from the page to the shoot and then in the edit, you see he kind of, he writes for the edit and then he shoots for it. So not that he isn't open to wiggle room, you know, if there's a moment of creativity, but you can, you read his script and you're seeing what he's seeing. There isn't a whole lot of ambiguity there. So you can kind of tell that he's thought it all through and he's been there and he has in his mind how things are going to go. So that makes me feel comfortable as an actor because I know things are going to go well. So that that also doesn't leave a whole lot of wiggle room for improv. I mean, he it sounds like he wants you to stick to the script. You know, I think that I think there are moments. He definitely gives you takes. He's he definitely in family possessions gave gave Leah and I takes 
where, you know, we, we were allowed to play and things like that. So it felt really collaborative, too, you know. But I think he, he always makes sure he gets a take he likes, and then you can also feel free to play with a few others. And then it's kind of however the story gets retold in the editing room um, is, is what comes out. So um, I think he knows what he wants, and he definitely makes sure he gets it. And then, you know, the rest is kind of up to how you want to play as an actor. So it's nice. Well, I mean, you guys say you're horror fans, so what are some of your favorite horror movies? I mean, I'm not asking, you know, don't give me your, I'm not going to say, <laughs> what's your ultimate favorite horror movie? Because being a horror fan, that's a loaded question. But you got to have some that, that you you go to when you're like, hey, I'm in the mood. I want to watch, you know, whatever. I, uh, I actually last night watched um, <laughs> Life After Beth. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Yep, it, that's um, the Joe Dante movie, right? Has Aubrey Plaza in it? Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. Um, it's pretty funny. I I was it laughing. Is. Yeah. So I mean, horror, you know, <laughs> kind of comedy horror, but I enjoyed it. So that was something I saw recently that I was like, well done. You know, I thought it was. I thought it was. It was a nice take on the zombie trope. So yeah, yeah. Uh, probably my all-time favorite is uh, Black Christmas, the original. Ooh, yeah. Um, the Bob Clark movie. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, top five. I don't know. I mean, it, it is a loaded question. You can't answer that. I mean, well, no, that's you, know, you get your alien in your jaws, but like Polanski's the tenant. I'm not supposed to say Polanski. I, I know. No, you can say Polanski. Polanski's Rosemary's I Baby. I don't give a. <laughs> I, I like the tenant. The tenant. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, Right, that was it was uh, Repulsion, The Tenant, and Rosemary's Baby, which are yeah. his trilogy of uh, it's the apartment trilogy. Of, yeah, yeah, it's apartment trilogy. Um, yeah, Tenant's a good one, but that that's like that's is that a year or two before he gets busted? You know, it's uh, seventy six. So so it's after he got busted. No, no, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't thought know he got busted in seventy five. When I saw the movie for the, for the first time, I, I you know, I, I didn't know uh, what a little little creepy was, but uh, I mean, you know, and he's the main character in it too, and he's really good in it. He's really likable in it. So, which is really weird because not a lot of directors are. I mean, we have some actors that become directors, but not a lot of directors want to be actors. Yeah. And he's 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 good in it. Um. So I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I could bust I out like, like top twenty for you. But uh, no, I, I like what you said, Black Christmas. So now that people don't acknowledge that, that's that's like one of the first slasher films. You know, it's it's a it's perfect. It's a perfect movie. Um, I, I like the slasher genre. You know, I had fun with it, and there are some legitimately good entries in there and then there's you know dopey ones that you you know the whole slasher genre you got to give a, a different kind of pass to um right but black christmas is just uh, wonderful it's perfect um, what about you eric are you a slasher fan i enjoy that i um i do i uh i'm kind of I'm new into the horror scene, you know, so it's been kind of, uh, ever since I did, uh, I did Family Possessions, I kind of started getting more into it and exploring it more, so I'm, I really am enjoying hearing everyone's takes on what their favorites are, but I would say Slasher is probably up there for me, you know, I think that that's, that's a fun ride, you know, when things are like a well-done Slasher for me, um, it's fun, and then, um, Anything suspenseful, anything that gives me that kind of edge of your seat feeling, you know, and does yeah. it really well, you know, I'm I'm into that. That's usually what I find to be. It just it's like it's well done to me. I feel like I had a good experience with the film if I if I literally was hairs on the back of my neck the whole time. You know, that's a fun did, feeling. Did you see a Quiet Place this year? That movie was. I all did. Fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, that was, that was also, I thought that that was really well done, um, just from, from that perspective of, 
when she steps on that nail going down the stairs into the basement, it's just like, it's, it's pretty, it's intense, you know? I thought, what? I was skeptical going in, I have to say, but I enjoyed it. I, you know, that was, that was one of the movies I, I was really looking forward to this year, so I wasn't that skeptical about it, but man, just had me on the edge of my seat going, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Yep. What's going to happen next, you know? Yeah. Well, right, you, Damien, did you see that? I did, yeah. The uh, guys that wrote that and, and produced it directed the uh, the movie I have coming out in the fall. So uh, oh. Scott Beck uh, and Brian Woods. Uh, wow. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I mean, it was great. I, I it was a, it was high on the anticipation list for me. It had a great trailer, and I know you know getting to know those two guys and working with them. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they're very talented and they're smart and they're they're legit horror fans. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it was like a really good Tremors sequel, A Quiet Place. I I could I could see that. Yeah, I I just remember when the trailer came out and the little kids they they show the scene where the little kids got the got the toy and it starts yeah. making noise. I, the first time I saw, it, I was like, "If you gotta be quiet, who the hell gives this toy to a child?" <laughs> you know, you know? Yeah, and then you see the well, no, then you see the movie and you, and you realize how and you're going, still, <laughs> who the hell gives this toy to a child? You know, yeah. it, it was it's a world I wouldn't survive in. Say what? It's a world I wouldn't survive in. Oh, I know quite a few people that wouldn't survive in that world. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, for one, <laughs> he just likes to yammer. <laughs> my, my aunt, too. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, shh. All right. Stay away from my aunt. <laughs> I'm moving. That's all I'm saying to him. <laughs> yeah. good, good, good year for horror movies, man. 2018, really good year. Yeah. Been a bit. Yeah. Let's keep keeps going. Hereditary. That was oh, another good there. one. Red Terry was very Polanski ish. It was. Uh, it was. It's almost like a. It plays kind of like a distant cousin to Rosemary's it Baby in the baby. Tenet. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, Kevin, the other guy from the from the Dorkening, he saw it the same weekend I did, and we both said the same thing. You know, it's like it was very Rosemary, there, without even. Uh, we didn't converse before we talked about it, and. We both said the same thing, like around the same time. Is that yeah, yeah. It's very Rosemary's Baby, especially yeah. the whole ending stuff, which seems to be most people's like problem with it. Yeah, I know. I don't understand that. That's totally Polanski. Yeah. Whatever. Kids. So along with yeah, really. Well, the kids youth these days. days. The, the, the... More people have shown up on my yep. screen. They appear. Yeah. This guy's just the top of a head, though. <laughs> He's a whole person. Okay. Well, it looks like we need to get we need to get ready for the live show. So, if people are looking for you, Damien, where can they find you on the uh, social networks? Oh man, they can find me on all of them. They can find me on the Facebooks and the Tweeters and the Instagrams, and it's all uh, Damien <laughs> Faye. Uh, no Snapchat, though, because I'm too old for that. Although everyone's faces yeah. looks really nice when they Snapchat. So maybe I should do that. I'll think about that. You yeah, you know, just find me. Yeah, they all have uh, dog faces and cats. And shit. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. What a weird place. And Erica, if people are looking for you, where can they find you? Uh, Facebook. Instagram is probably the best. You can tweet. Uh, that Twitter is probably a good archive of, of um, you know, do it. So um, I don't really check it much on Instagram. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the platform. That or Facebook. Okay. Sounds good. LinkedIn. So. When a nun's curse, when when a nun's curse uh, gets 
gets ready to shoot, we need to have you come back on, talk about it. You know, it sounds like a great time. And, uh, of course, for Damian Maffei and Eric Edwards, I'm the 13th Wolfman, and I'm on the prowl.